Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Um, I see some familiar names. I know we haven't gotten to know each other um, terribly well yet, but uh, really had a fantastic time with everyone last time, uh, last month. I wonder if, uh, if you could put your, let's see, do we have reactions on? Maybe raise your hand uh, if you were if you were with us last time. Rachel, okay, thanks, Rachel. <laughs> five, I know there was more than five of you. Okay, good. Um, not sure, I, I don't, um, and Jeff, I'm gonna have the, this full screen, so I uh, might not have access to the chat all the time. Do you have the link for the Padlet that we could put in there? Yep, I will send it right now. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so we'll get started. Um, so this is webinar part two. Oh, and we need to, uh, are we recording? Yes. Um, this is webinar part two, and we're gonna talk about digital content creation um this evening okay and uh this is going to be really building um a little bit on our first uh webinar on the um information piece and so uh let's just kind of get started here um just to reintroduce myself my name is jerry yamashita i'm senior senior technical advisor with world education um and uh I will be your host for this and the um, following three webinars um, in the Teaching with Tech series. And there's a schedule here in case you want a little refresher. Um, and you can see all of the same information in the Padlet link that Jeff just put in the, in the chat. So um, go ahead and get that open on your device if you can. Um, and uh, you can follow right along and, and have all the same information we're looking at here on the screen. There is a link there if you want to, uh, if you still need to register or need to refresh your registration. Um, so today we'll do content, digital content creation, and then the remaining three, communication and collaboration. We'll look at safety and then problem solving and lifelong learning. So today, uh, for today's session, what we're going to do is look at kind of three main points. Okay, and we want to we want to dive into how to create and edit digital content and different ways that you can do that. Different tools. We'll talk about that. Um, how to integrate that information into really this this part for me is sort of like uh, synthesizing is kind of how I look at this this objective. Um, and the right ways to do it, okay? Because we're going to talk about copyright and licenses. And I think you may have already um, explored that a little bit um, in other sessions that you've been working on outside of this. And then uh, we'll look at sort of a this third bullet point, um, knowing how to give understandable instructions this is like a concept of like programming, okay? And we'll get into that a little bit more. So just like last time, take a, I wanna get a, a, an idea of where we're at as a group. Take a pulse. Um, and if you can, I believe you should be able to see it on your Padlet. Um, how are your students creating digital content? Now this could be inside or outside of class. So please add a comment to this post on the Padlet and tell us a little bit how about how what your students are doing. Now this could be for school or not for school. Maybe it's for social media, maybe it's for hobbies whatever. Um, and so I'm going to switch back and see 
what kind of answers we're getting. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm seeing um, some answers come in. Uh, Katya, thank you for, looks like you have a, a, a Padlet account. So I'm glad to see that. PowerPoint presentations, fantastic. Yeah, creating content, Flipgrid videos. Is there anything specific with social media that um, that your students are particularly interested in? Oh, TikTok. <laughs> yeah, TikTok dances are are it, right? Yeah, Instagram, Canva. Yeah, Canva. Canva's great. And, and I have a little bit, I'll go into it a little bit uh, in a little bit here, but I've got some, um, a cool resource on, on Canva if you're interested in incorporating that. Excellent. So that's still open. Anyone can still pop into these um, comments on these, these uh, topics. The second one, uh, the second question for getting a pulse is what are some of the tools that you can use or that you use or you've heard about to create and or edit digital content? So that's going to be the second one here. Yep, great. Canva again. Fantastic. Yeah, Google Suite, quizzes, Nearpod, Wordwall. Oh, some new ones for me. I, I'm going to have to look at some of these. This is great. Boom cards. Haven't heard of that one. Yeah, some great answers coming in. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, and keep those answers coming in if you think of something that's fantastic. And go to the next um, section here. So this is just, you know, you don't have to answer if you'd like to uh, voice out and, and share. That would be great. Um, if you have any questions about this, I'd be happy to uh, discuss. But this is really an opportunity to just take a moment, think about these questions on a personal level and kind of check in and see where you're at on that. So creating and editing digital content. So the question would be, I know how to create and edit digital content. Um, and you can, you know, uh, back on here, feel free to, to comment, feel free to use the little heart button. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. Somewhat, yeah, and that's, a, you know, that's a, a great answer because there's so much out there and this is kind of a broad question in a way, right? Like what is, what is digital content? So I would put that out there while people are learning or uh, people are uh, posting. Um, would anyone like to share, like what is your, what's your um, definition of digital content out there? You can open up your microphone and just jump in if you'd like. Okay, so it looks like some folks are saying, yeah, I'm learn I'm in the learning stages. That's great. There's there's a lot to do. When I'm thinking about 
creating and editing digital content, I'm thinking of it, uh, at least for myself, I'm kind of thinking about uh, text, right? And the different ways that I can present text, uh, whether that's on a some something simple like a Google Doc, or it is something like a Padlet, right? Where I can present text in a way that's interactive. Um, or a website, building a website. And I think I'm getting some things in the in the uh, chat here. Yeah, okay, so I'm content that's in digital format. Yep. Resources created by means of digital applications and tools. Okay, I like that answer. It's great. Needs to be very interactive to students. I think that's really important, right? We want to be very intentional about the design, uh, what we create for for that learning uh, opportunity, right? So that the experience that we're trying to create <clears throat> should be uh, engaging and interactive. I agree. Yeah, content that can be shared digitally. Yeah, text, image, videos, audio. All of these things. So yeah, I think we're we're kind of on the same page here. Thank you for your answers. The second question is using digital assets. Checking in with yourself again. I know how to search and identify appropriate digital content for reuse and how to assign attribution. What do I mean there? We could put it in the chat if you want to. Uh, someone could maybe paraphrase that, re rephrase that in a way that um, maybe is a little bit more <laughs> understandable than what I wrote. How to reuse? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Permissions granted. Fantastic. Thank you, Alyssa. That is that is probably one of the more important parts of this is that you have the permissions but but also that you're giving credit right like we wouldn't write a we wouldn't quote somebody in a paper and not say who said it and where i found it right yes again great what material can be used as well as modified with permissions yes Fantastic. So that's great, Celeste. Yeah, these are really, you know, when you start using this, you'll you'll know just by the symbols. You'll start to get more familiar with it. So that's fantastic. Okay, great. Let's see if we got any. Yep, we're getting some answers. And then bringing it together. So the, the this last check-in, this self-assessment, bringing it all together. I know how to use different apps and software and synthesize content in one place. Okay. How comfortable are we with that? And again, we can put in, uh, you can put your hearts there. You can put a content. Yeah, my phone. Yes, just like, I like that, a multi-tool. It's just like, does anyone have, I, I have one of those tools that, you know, you take you you open it and, and it's like a pair of pliers and then it's got a scissors and a knife and a can opener. It's kind of like how our phones are, right? They they can do all of these tool uh like functions, right? Different types of tools. And then the focus here is how do we bring all of those things together? All of those places and apps and software and everything that we've used to create different types of digital content, how do we bring that all together? Okay. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit today. I'm going to present you with a, with a, a fun idea, and I hope it's fun for everyone here. And I think, um, depending on how many people we have, 
I can't really see, but um, I think we might be able to do this in some groups. Before we get into that, <clears throat> let's just uh, briefly review the, the competencies and the framework. Creating digital content, that's what we're going to um, look at, different ways that we can create digital content. How do we edit that? All right, you know, and and coming, I come from a digital media background. And so, you know, when I'm thinking about, you know, that creating digital content piece, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm recording a piece of music or I am uh, recording a video, right? That's not the end of it, right? When I When I hit record and then when I hit stop, we're not done yet, right? There's there's more that needs to be done and we need to go, and now we have to edit. <clears throat> I might need to trim that video clip down and bring in some audio and replace some audio. So that's the editing process, right? It's not just about creating, but then it's about editing it and, and really purposing it for what you need it to be used for. We've got some resources here. <clears throat> There's a basic graphic design tutorial, GCF. Um, as usual, big fan of GCF. They have so much content out there. For those folks that were mentioning Canva, here's a great, um, uh, this is directly from their website and they have all these tutorials there um, ready for you. So there's just a couple of, of um, resources for, for you for creating digital content. The rest of it we're gonna use today or that have been used um, are um, going to be some tools that you're already familiar with, namely the Google Workspace apps, okay? <clears throat> so we're not gonna go off into left field. We're gonna stick with what's uh, what we've been using, the tried and true stuff. 3.2 how to integrate digital content, putting, like I said, kind of synthesizing those things, re-elaborate digital content. This might be that re reuse and remixing um, concept that that of Creative Commons, right? And then those resources here that um, just a couple things we've identified. GCF learn free again using the information uh, correctly. Maybe you want to clean up, tighten up some writing. The Purdue Online Writing Lab is a probably one of the top resources for that. Uh, and also, this is a great uh, resource to share with your students for sure. Um, if they are starting to to learn. Uh, writing styles and um, really anything to do with, with uh, writing. Purdue is great. 3.3, copyright and licenses. Talk about Creative Commons, um, understanding how they apply to the information and the, you know, the development and publishing when you're putting that out there. What does that mean? So of course we have the Creative Commons um, site and we, we could probably add some more. I know that Jeff has a lot on this um, topic. Um, GCF Learn Free again, using Creative Commons. Um, and then 3.4 is the programming piece. Now, I don't want people to get freaked out. <laughs> they talk about programming like, uh oh, you're gonna have me writing a, a, a code for a, you know, some sort of application. No, that's not what this means. Even though the picture uh, appears to be something like uh, a programming language, right? But that's not what we're talking about. When we're talking about programming here. We're talking about, um, at least in the context of, <laughs> at least in the context of today, we're talking about developing instructions for computing systems to do something, right? Um, you're sort of 
programming the machine. And in today's example, we're going to be programming, uh, well, it's already been done, but I'll show you how to do it. We're going to be programming a Google form to do what you want it to do, okay? Because you want it to do certain things to give you certain outcomes or to collect certain information. There is a lot of uh, content out there how, how to, val does anyone know what this means? Validate responses? Go ahead and raise your hand or put it, put a heart in the Padlet. What validate responses in Google Forms means? Let's see. One, okay. Oh yeah, self-marking test. That's a yes. That is one of the ways that it can be used. Great, Miranda. So a couple people, <clears throat> a few people. Great. So I'm going to show you uh, another creative way to do to use this function today. Here's another one. This is a little bit more complicated than the validated answers. Branching logic. <clears throat> Has anyone ever used this function before? Now, both of these are technically programming, right? Like you are you are designing forms to do something a little bit more complicated than just the default version, right? Um, this function actually will allow you to... Um, if anyone read those books when they were younger, choose your own adventure books, right? Depending on the answer that you choose or that you give, it, you might go to a different part of the story. That's that's kind of what this branching logic means, right? We're going to ask a question and based on the answer that they, that they um, provide, they might go to the next section or it might move them to another section completely. Yeah, exactly, Miranda. So fantastic. Okay, so this brings us to our collaborative activity. And I'm going to, let's see here. I don't know if I can see. Oh, it really picked up, okay. So we've got se approximately 75 folks. Yeah, I want to. I'm going to give everyone this. Um, oops, it's actually this one. Okay. Um, I just put the link for the the site in there. Can everyone? Please click on that and check and see if that opens up correctly for you. You should see a digital escape room. Okay, great. Thank you. I got a couple thumbs up. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I would, I'm, I'm wondering if I can do some different rooms. This is, uh, this is a fun little activity that I designed, <clears throat> especially for this group. And how many people here have know about or have done an escape room in real life? Like where you go to a place and you try to escape the room. It's a it's sort of an experience. Is anyone familiar with that? No? 
Haunted. <laughs> wow, really? Oh, one yes. A couple yeses. Okay. I've done it in a game, but not in real life. Okay. Okay. So all of the people that are saying no, I'm wondering if you know, if it's no, I've never heard about it or no, I've never done it. No, I've never done it. <laughs> but you've heard about it. Yes. Okay. Neither. Okay. I've seen some never done it and some neithers. <clears throat> So for those people who have not ever heard of it, a digital, uh, well, an escape room in real life is usually some sort of themed uh, experience, right? It could be it could be a haunted house, it could be a, uh, you know, a, a navy ship, you know, or some sort of laboratory maybe, or a old castle, right? Whatever the scenario is, but you are inside this room that has a lock door and you're usually with a group of your friends and you have to find clues around the room in order to um, make progress you have to solve the, the clues or the puzzles and then it will unlock something and then you know it, it goes down the line and then you eventually will be able to unlock the door to escape the room and normally it's also done under a time limit I'm not going to put a time limit on here, but I'm going to watch this because it, it shouldn't take too long. I've made this one pretty simple and I want to allow enough time for us to discuss the elements of this um, room. OK, so this is a digital version. And this is really something that we can use with. Um, I've done it with professional development and in contexts like this, but I've also used it with students and they really love this. It's very easy to build this. It just takes you know, as much time as you want to put into it or as much time as you want to plan for it to um, take, and it could be simple to a little bit more advanced. Um, so I will probably put you into groups and I'll, and, and I'll just have you shout out if you need me to come into your room and help you. You're going to work together to solve the puzzles in order to unlock this room, okay? Um, and just on this one uh, activity, I used all of these tools. Okay. Seven tools, seven digital tools, content creation, content resources, and then synthesized into one experience right and this in this case i've put it all onto a google site okay so the takeaway from this activity is i really want you to come away with an understanding of how relationships between multi multiple types of digital media can create a singular experience okay if you click on the escape button right there here's the scenario okay your party, your team has just awoken in a mysterious hallway. What happened? Maybe it was the, the AI bots. You know, they, they, they've captured you. Who knows what happened? There's four pathways. And at the end of each path, there's a box with a photo and a note inside. Solve this puzzle. It's the same note for each one. Solve this puzzle and you shall be granted one of four keys. Here's the puzzles, okay? At the intersection of the four paths, there is an old computer terminal with a form on the screen. Could this be the way out? Here's the terminal. If you're on mobile, clicking on this will open up the terminal form in a new tab and it'll, it'll be a little bit easier to read for you, okay? In case you need that, if you're on a mobile device, okay? So only one person needs to, to fill out the form in your team, so you figure that out but everyone else is going to help find the answers. Be careful of this here, okay? We wanna use all caps and I'll give you a hint, one of them's numbers. So just use numbers without the comma. Use all caps or the form will not compute, okay? And I'll tell you about why we do that um, after we're done. So let's go. 
Yeah, stop share. Welcome back. Welcome back. No, we're still trapped. We're not uh, back yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> how many we had 10? We had 10 teams, yes? Yes. 10 teams. Yes, I think we need only one to get out. Okay. Oh, so oh, from, my, from my multiple. data, from my and data, my three. secret data, I it looks, it appears that three teams escaped. Yeah, we didn't get those. We three just needed escaped. one more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never All got right. started. So can we have uh do which teams escaped? I I this I don't know though. Because it's it's it is team 10 escaped. Team seven. Team 10. Oh team 10. Great job, team 10. Thank you. On the I'm other very <laughs> Great. What okay. Well, so we, well, are we gonna go over the answers? Because we 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 just we kept getting um could not compute. Everything we typed in was just oh. was saying could not compute. Yes. So someone from team 10, can you tell us what answer one was? Okay, so the cool. 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 Yes, answer was Jacko. And this was, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a new word for me. Uh, Jacko. Ja. Jacko. Perfect. Jacko. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was answer one. Okay. Um, that is the national bird, right? Uh, nope. What's he missing? A T, T at the end, the letter oh, T see. at the end. Yeah. Now it computes. Okay, what other team escaped? We have another team that escaped. Mm -hmm. We didn't escape, we got the first three. Oh, you got the first three. Okay. What's uh, so? Can you, well, can you give us number two then? What's our answer for two? Sure. Answer for number two is one hundred and seventy-nine thousand six hundred and fifty-one. Correct. Thank you. It was just the population, right? Yep. All right. Now number three. We have a picture of uh, some landscape. Who? Oh yeah. No space is allowed. No spaces, no commas. <laughs> uh, number three, what what are we looking at there? Mount Jimmy. Mount Jimmy. Mount Jimmy. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And it was really easy because you could just tap on the picture and it would tell you <laughs> what it was. <laughs> yeah, so Mount... Uh, but Mount is spelled out. Yes, Mount, not not M T. Mount Jimmy. Uh, with the space, space is okay. Correct. And number four. This is the one that most people, I guess, did not get. Right. We had an anagram, and the anagram was is nautical. Is nautical. So I kept giving the wrong clue. I'm sorry. <laughs> Like that in is not a <laughs> Team one got it. Yes, what is it, team one? Saint Lucia. Saint S A I N T. But where's the apostrophe from it? What is that? Let's not get technical. That's my team fault, one because the, the, the clue was <laughs> is not a call. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. So it, Jeff, I kept saying it's not a call. Jeff messed fault. you guys up. That's it, you know. So please put that in your review. It was not <laughs> me. You sound like TXC. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great job. So now we got a we got all the right answers. So why did we have it in? Why did I put those in caps? Why did I ask you to put all caps? Does anyone have an idea? 
case sensitive. Yep. You know, it has to do a lot with um, when you're trying to get the verification for the answer, uh, if you leave that blank without any validation, uh, it might take, it might accept wrong answers. And so one way that you can do it to try to get a closer capture of correct answers is requirement of something like all caps um, so that you won't get a, a more wrong answers. Um, what I want to do, oh, Jeff's showing. Yeah, so he's looking at showing now the response validation option there. It's right on the three, uh, three dots. Some people refer to those three dots as a skinny snowman. I don't know if you've ever heard that one. Um, if there are lines, I've heard them call the hamburger. Yes. And you know what? Can I just say this is not related, but with the Google tools, the three lines, some people call it hamburger. And then the the dots, the nine dots, they call it the waffle. Have you heard of that? But I would you call it an egg tree. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be more like breakfast. So I like the waffle, and then I'm gonna call the three the three lines pancakes. Not a hamburger. I think it looks more like pancakes than a hamburger, anyways. But uh there you go. So he's he has put in how I did the Jaco validation. Um, and then I put in the custom error text, does not compute. So that's how that's done. Okay, and that can help you with your, your you know, if you want to use this to create uh, quizzes for your students, uh, which is nice because that can be an asynchronous activity that they can do anytime and, and it can self-grade. Okay. Um, so we ran, we're running very close on time. I want to go back to uh, just a review of the some of the tools that we use today. In that um, activity, um, we were using a Google site to deliver the the escape room. I used a Google form to create the um, uh, the lockbox. Uh, I used Google Docs in the background um, to draft up all of my text before I copied it over to the Google site. I used tools like Pixabay and Creative Commons, and you saw me putting the attributions underneath the photos that I used, right? Those were all open. Um, Creative Commons licenses for reuse, um, and they were correctly attributed. You could also click on it to take you to the original source so that you can verify and copy that picture if you wanted to as well. Um, I used an anagram tool, which is linked on that site as well, um, to create the anagram for St. Lucia. Okay, and so these are all, all the tools that I used um, to create one singular uh, Pixabay was another one that I used for searching some images. Here's the anagram generator in case you want that link that's also on the Padlet. So in conclusion on this, I really want you to think about, do you have now a new idea on how to integrate all of these digital skills into your instruction? I know that was a lot of, of stuff that we just did. I hope it was a fun activity. Um, and some of these ideas are, you know, you could create an escape room for your students. There's also a whole folder, Google Drive folder that I linked that has a whole bunch of external resources that I gathered um, on how to build escape rooms. You might have, it, this might have triggered some new ideas for you as well on how to use some of these digital tools, content creation tools to create other types of um, learning opportunities for your students. I'm so excited to hear um, more about 
that when you do. Um, any questions or feedback for me? I know we probably don't have too much time, but I would love, uh, you know, feel free to contact me by email. I'd love to talk more with you if you have ideas or questions about this, um, about the digital escape room concept. Um, since we don't have too much time here, I'm happy to open up time outside of this. Thank you very much. Um, we're one minute over. Next webinar, just to remind you, uh, April 27th, same time, same place. Um, and we'll be talking about communication and collaboration. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share out the Padlet um, again. I just want to know, just, um, this, this recording is going to be placed in Moodle? The recording will go into Moodle. Uh, for those of you who are in the SOL CC course, yes. But I will be sending out a follow-up email with both the Padlet and the recording um, after uh, after the recording is uh, completed. So that's in the cloud. Once I have that link, I will be sharing those out in the morning. But in the meantime, if you want the Padlet right now and lost the link or never got it, um, you might have joined late, there's the Padlet link. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. I'll, I'll stay behind for um, if you have any questions and if you want to stay on, I'd be happy to chat with you. If not, have a wonderful evening, and I'm looking forward to uh, to April 27th. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, does anyone who's still on have any questions or? Um.